Gretchen, your orange cake recipe is so delicious. Can I add lemons instead of oranges to make a lemon cake? Hey everyone, what's up? And welcome back to Gretchen's Vegan Bakery. Over the years, so many people have asked me how to create recipes from scratch, or at the very least, tweak or fix or change existing recipes. And this is always a difficult question to answer since there really is no one size fits all answer. All the cakes are different with different ingredients in different ratios with different mixing methods. So while of course it's possible to fix or change or convert your cake recipes, there's just no one way to do it. So today I thought I would take you through the process of troubleshooting a specific recipe that just doesn't work when subbing in lemon juice for oranges in my orange cake recipe when at first glance it seems like this should be an easy no-brainer well it doesn't work first of all this orange cake recipe that we are going to try to convert to a lemon cake is a one bowl mix my new obsession for food processor cakes it's my ultimate lazy cake method the original recipe for this orange cake used whole oranges little clementines pureed up with the skins and all and then since I already had the food processor out and dirty I thought why not just throw in the rest of the cake ingredients and it worked like a dream come true and since then I am hooked on food processor cake mixes but it doesn't always work first of all as you can see the orange cake recipe is so fantastic it's no wonder everyone is asking how to convert it into other flavors look at this fluffy texture it's just such a really beautiful cake I also recently subbed in strawberries instead of the oranges with equally beautiful results. But what happens when I subbed in lemon for the orange? Major disaster. So I will note that the only change I'm making in this lemon version is that I'm not adding in whole lemons to the batter like we do for the orange cake since lemon skins are very thick and pithy, meaning that's the white coating between the skin and the flesh that's called the pith. And it's a very bitter, not to mention all the seeds that are in lemons and my clementines had no seeds. So rather I just juiced it and then put in all the lemon zest from all the lemons instead. Both recipes were mixed exactly the same and I do want to note that I am weighing my ingredients not only to keep this control experiment legitimate, but because you really should always weigh your ingredients, specifically flour. I don't often stress this as much as I should, but it is going to make a difference in your recipes 100%. It is impossible to get the same result every time when you are merely scooping flour with volume cups measure. Well, not only flour, but everything. Whether you are a direct scooper or a fluffer and a scooper or a spooner or a combination of all of those, you will always get a different measurement every single time. Believe me, go ahead and try it. Scoop three different cups of flour, trying to get them the same every time, and I guarantee you they will be different every time. Translate that through to your recipes. Yep, you guessed it. Different every time. Okay, so now that we have settled both recipes, they were both mixed exactly the same, and this lemon version, total fail. Heavy, gummy, bordering on rubbery, and almost raw looking inside with very little rise. So back to the question at hand, why wouldn't substituting in lemon for the orange work here? Well, it's all about science, so sit back, put on your chemistry goggles, and fire up that Bunsen burner. Let's experiment. It's very obvious here that the lemon juice is what messed up this recipe. Baking powder is the raising agent in the orange cake and it works beautifully, but for some reason the baking powder didn't work with the lemon. Why not? Well, here's what we know about lemon juice. It is highly acidic with a pH of about two, whereas orange juice has a pH of four. Baking powder does not neutralize highly acidic ingredients. It just can't, but baking soda can. Baking soda has four times more leavening power than baking powder alone, and it does a fabulous job of neutralizing acidic ingredients. In other words, raising the pH level, which is clearly what we need to happen here. Just one half teaspoon of baking soda can neutralize one cup of sour milk. 
So by taking out some of the baking powder and replacing it with some baking soda, the resulting cake is absolutely fantastic, light and fluffy and perfectly raised. Now that's what a lemon cake should look like. So the moral of this story is something I've said a million times. Baking is a science and the ingredients are working together to create a chemical reaction resulting in beautiful or not so beautiful cakes. The only way to control the outcome of your cakes is to really know your ingredients and know the role that each one plays and how they are reacting with each other. Once you get to know that, you can more easily know where to tweak, adjust, add more, omit, and sometimes just trash the whole idea altogether. So unless you are willing to do trial after trial to eventually get to the right balance of ingredients for the perfect formula, I would suggest to just find tried and true recipes. Yep, you guessed it. Those recipes would all be found at Gretchen'sVeganBakery.com. So head over there to grab every recipe under the sun and so much more information about vegan baking. I have a section called Baking 101 where you can browse through categories of more science-related articles that I've written so you can get a better sense of what your ingredients are actually doing inside your recipes. If you liked this video and you want more like this one, be sure to comment below and also like this video. And real quick, a great big shout out to my patrons on Patreon and my pals in PayPal. These folks are the ones making all of this possible. Their monthly support helps to buy ingredients so that I can continue testing recipes to make sure that you are only getting tried and true recipes that work every time. So if you think you can help for as little as a cup of coffee a month, click the links below to find out how. All right, everyone, thanks so much for watching and until next time, happy vegan baking. Bye for now.